Thank you for joining me live from the grooming table. I am Amy Lee, certified professional pet groomer since 2003, but it is absolutely my pleasure to share with you the secrets of the pet grooming industry so you can provide the same level of quality care to your beloved pets at home, just like the care I provide to my pet clients here in my grooming salon. I share that with you. One of my goals here on my YouTube channel is to bring a new voice to the pet grooming industry. And that is one that includes pet owners as valuable consumers and not just pet groomers. With so many people seeking valuable knowledge in order to groom their dogs at home safely and effectively, having a place to learn proper dog grooming techniques and receive professional advice on tools, products, and where to get them is essential. And that's why I created this YouTube channel for you and your pets. Welcome to Go Groomer in 2023. We started this gig in 2018. Yeah, 2018. Look at us. We're still here getting together live from the grooming table every other Monday. And I love what we're doing together and the quality that we are providing to pets all over the world, our own pets and other pets. Tonight's topic is really good I can't wait I could have written and written and written about this topic for days but I condensed it for you the topic is dogs I refuse to groom and how to build a thriving client base so you may be thinking right now hey this isn't for me well if you're a pet parent and you're a pet owner and your dog requires grooming this is for you because this is talking about the relationship and building a thriving business for a pet groomer who cares for your dogs and why they demand the things that they demand. And there are probably things that you pet groomers are not demanding that you're gonna learn here tonight that is going to change your pet grooming business completely. And it's gonna benefit the pets. So pet owners, it's gonna benefit you and your pets. So listen, this is wonderful. I can't wait to get started. All right, <clears throat> let's start. Happy New Year, everybody. I want to say that first. Okay, another New Year. Here we go. In a perfect world, I would love to groom all the dogs, every dog. And I just can't do that. I can't groom every dog successfully. Every dog grooming session does not end successfully every time. So... I've been grooming dogs professionally for 20 years and I've learned to say no and when to make that decision. And I'm sharing that with you guys tonight. No, I will not groom your dog. That is a hard statement for a pet groomer to make, but it is often the best decision for the professional and for the dog. So I want you guys to keep those things in mind as we continue this discussion here tonight. You are going to learn easy ways to run your business and to make a very streamlined situation for the pets for you for the owners it's it's just this is the way it has to be done and I'm going to share my secrets with you on how to do this pet groomers need to protect themselves and their livelihood in order to continue serving their community with their services that they provide for pet grooming so we have to protect our livelihood what we do we have to protect them by looking out for ourselves, but there's more. Okay, so how do you refuse services for dogs with a clear conscience? How do you say no and be solid on that decision? That's a hard decision to say, no, I can't groom your dog. I want to groom them all. Big, small, groom them all. I want to groom them all. So what requirements should you have before committing a dog to your grooming schedule? <clears throat> guys listen up this is important pet groomers out there pay attention you really need this video and you may already be doing a lot of these things or all of these things but I'm gonna lay it out there for you it's all formatted it's all line outlined it's it's a perfect outline so in this video I hope to help you easily determine which clients you should work with and which clients you should not work with you know <laughs> As a pet groomer, that's something we never, we never felt we had the option to do is say no. We do have that option. And why would we make that decision? I'm going to give you a clear understanding of that tonight. 
how to implement a client screening system. Okay? I want you to learn how to implement a client screening system that will become your most relied upon business infrastructure. And if you follow this business model, your pet grooming business will thrive. This is a system, so take notes, <laughs> okay? Who's taking notes here, huh? I got a lot of notes in front of me. So I already took my notes, it's your turn. Okay, so because this is a system, you may want to take notes. Setting these standards for you and your pet grooming business will allow you to enjoy a long-term career as a groomer and automatically shape your business into one that is financially predictable, safe, and attainable. This is important, guys. If you're a pet groomer, it's a business. Screening potential clients is easier than you think. It's simple and you charge for it, okay? I hope you wrote that down in your notes. That's right. Schedule 15 minute, a 15 minute time slot for screening new clients and charge $25 or more for a fee. 15 minutes, okay? You schedule this. This is a scheduled thing. This will eliminate future clients that will stand you up, no shows, bring your dogs in deplorable condition. It will expose dogs with behavior issues that could put you and the dog in danger, this client screening process. But most of all, this 15 minute screening session with you and the dog will show you if the client is committable. And it will give you a real life moment with the dog to determine if the possibility of working together, having a working relationship, you and the dog, if that's possible. It will give you an idea if you can achieve this. And don't forget, you're getting paid for this session and you deserve it. You charge for this. It's not a huge charge, but it's a $25 charge for 15 minutes that is going to tell you if a client is committable because the pet owner has to be committable here or, or you and the pet are the only ones that are at their mercy and you know you can't allow this to happen you have to run your business so why would you charge for this you know you automatically you're thinking groomers don't charge for this kind of thing come on all right i want to ask you a question can you find me a plumber that will troubleshoot your water leak for free just troubleshoot it. He's going to come back and fix it another day. Aren't, aren't you going to pay him for troubleshooting the fact that, yeah, you have a water leak. There it is. Okay, let me make a note of the things I need to bring back with me to fix this. Okay, that's all part of the charge. Or how about this? How about a vet that will not charge you for a follow-up appointment? And if they don't charge you, it was already priced into the initial treatment. Don't forget that. There is charges incorporated in services, and you're providing services. You are a service provider too, and you need to get paid for your skills and your expertise. There's not an abundance of pet groomers, so know your worth and charge for it. You got skills. <laughs> you do. <laughs> you got skills. Charge for it. Know your worth. It's so important. Okay, let's get back to talking about this screening session. During your screening session, your new client screening session, so if you're gonna add a new client, you wanna do a screening session first. During your screening session, you may determine that the dog's not healthy enough to endure the grooming required to meet the needs of the dog. You, you, you may determine that. Would you rather determine that during a screening session or would you rather determine that when you scheduled a two-hour groom and you can't finish it? Now, technically, you should still get paid for that groom, but that's up to you. I say you're, it's committed, it's an appointment. If unforeseen situations happen, you still need to get paid. So, but what I'm saying to you is during your screening session, this can stop a lot of those problems from happening. Um, let's take, for instance, a dog that may not be of the best health. The owner may be in denial of that, that my dog can endure grooming. Well, that's because they don't know what we have to do. They're not here, they leave. You know, they don't understand 
what we need from the dog and what the dog needs from us. So by scheduling this screening session, you can comprise a plan. Let's take, for instance, the dog that you may say, oh, this dog is, is going to struggle to get through this grooming session, okay? So now you can comprise a plan with the owner that's customized for their pet, such as three grooming sessions in a six-week time frame that are shorter in time and lower in cost. They add up to the same grooming time and grooming cost as a as a single grooming session would be, but you split it up and schedule it. It has to be scheduled. You split it up into three. And by doing that, you can encompass the needs of that dog just the same way. So you can deviate from what's normal, guys, to accommodate dogs that may have more requir requirements because of their ability to get through the grooming process itself. Okay, but you can determine that in your screening process. It's very important. Okay, so you are a professional and you have to lead your clients to make better decisions for their pets. That's your job, you're the professional. Educate yourself, which is what you do and you are doing now and you've always done. But first, let me explain to you guys a few situations in which I would refuse to serve a client. And then I'm going to show you how to structure your potential client screening sessions. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to tell you how to do this. All you got to do is write it down. <laughs> okay, so number one, why would I refuse to do clients that do not rebook upon checkout? That is something that I refuse to move further with. A client that will not rebook an appointment, the next grooming appointment upon checkout. The object is to build a thriving client base. Remember, clients who refuse to rebook their next appointment upon checkout do not value the service that you provide and they do not put importance on dog grooming for their pet. Unfortunately, they're not your, they're not your forever client. They're not, you want forever clients, forever clients. These clients will stand you up, which causes you to lose money. They will wait until their dog is in deplorable condition to have them groomed, which sets you and the dog up for an unpleasant grooming experience. And it really does, guys. Trust me, I've been there. Because of my experience, I have, I have experienced all of this, and I can give this plan to you as a gift. Both you and the dog do not deserve to have that kind of a grooming experience. So you have to reel them in, okay? You as a professional only want to serve pet owners that value pet grooming as a necessity for their dogs. A lot of people do not value pet grooming as a necessity for their dogs. But you're a professional building a thriving business. You want to find the clients that do value that. That's the only clients that you really can serve appropriately. Unfortunately, you're going to have to say no to those who will not become a routine client. And remember, you're building a successful business and you need clients that want to be on board with that. <laughs> now, what's the exception to this rule? What is the exception to the rule of, this is number one, clients that will not rebook upon checkup? Checkout, checkup, checkout. Is there an exception to this rule? Yes, we can have exceptions to some rules. Everyone has a busy schedule and at times your client will have to wait until their work schedule is posted for the following month for them to book an appointment. I understand that, I can get on board with that. So what do you do? You add them on your schedule to give them a call the first of the month and have them book the next appointment and tell them that that is what you're willing to do. If, they're, if they can't rebook now upon checkout, I'll put you in my schedule to give you a call the first of the month and you will have your work scheduled then and we can schedule Fluffy for the groom. If they won't commit to that, then you simply say, 
I will not be able to take you on as a client, okay? You have to say no sometimes. If they can't commit to that, then you're holding yourself and your business hostage. Is everything okay? Everything's fine, I'm just coming down to comment. Oh, what did you want to comment? Do you like what I'm saying? Yeah, but I was just thinking about the $25. Okay, should it be more? No. no. <laughs> well, because I was just thinking like, um, you're relating yourself to... I can't see you. I know, well that's because there's no chair here. You're relating yourself to places that do charge and all that stuff, but then like you were talking today earlier to me about... Comparing my, it to your business. business. What is your business? Uh, drywall. So This is my husband. Hubby go groomer. It's the forehead of the husband. <laughs> But we would go to a job and we would go see if we can do it and give them a price and not charge them for it. For a consult. For a consult. But a plumber, on the other hand, would. So I'm not sure if you should charge $25. However, having a meet and greet with the dog at the end of the day, say, bring your dog in for a couple minutes. Let's see how we get along and see if we can well, do dog. Well, now there's a process to determine we yeah. didn't get there yet. Okay. So there is time involved well, and there's hands on. Then I'll come back down and give you more grief. No, but there is hands on. But I, I hear what you're saying. If I was if I was looking to um, potentially be a home designer for somebody and they said, well, you know, can you just come over and we can meet you and you can look at our house? Well, yeah. I may not charge for that. Um, well, that's true because it, it, the scale of work is much greater. Yeah. I am going to be in this screening process i'm going to be hands-on with the dog for 15 right. minutes and this, the scale of the price or the job is going to be much much higher i'm getting a chair you can get a chair hubby go groomer is going to join us good because he can bring a lot to the grooming table and he is in a in a professional business it's not pet grooming it's drywalling on a commercial level residential and commercial level so they have a lot of clients they have residential and they have commercial so, well, I'm going to ha I'm going to put us both on the screen. Well, no, here, <laughs> she's on she's on wheels. There it is. I can wait. Oh you wait, groomer time. I can I can put both of us on the screen. No, I can I can't touch my stuff. I got stuff to do. You can't touch your stuff. I'll I'll handle the stuff. <laughs> no. Let's see what what do you want me to touch? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Hold on. Let me fix the screen so that Hubby Go Groomer can join us. Okay, so we're both in there now. It's well, yeah, but I got stuff to buttons to push and stuff. It's a little crowded for me. Um, You're a little paranoid. Yeah, I gotta turn. I'm gonna have to turn our chat off for now. But guys, don't worry. I see the chat right here. It's right here with us. Um, what am I looking for? The live stream canvas and the chat. And now. Oh my. That better? Yeah, but you look much, you're much more appealing than I am on TV. I'm mic'd and you're not, so I hope that um, they can still hear you. I, I can speak to your boobs. <laughs> no, don't do that. Stop it. Oh, sorry. Maybe, maybe if I lay the mic between us. Well, let me just see if they can hear okay. You can just ask them. We can see on the chat over here. Okay. Can you hear? <laughs> they can hear us, I think. I just want to make sure that everybody can hear. Okay, so... We get a yes. Good, okay, so it's okay? All right, good, yes. Okay, thanks, Sean. Good, thanks, guys. Now, let's move on to the next, number two. I would refuse clients that don't schedule, that, I'm sorry, I would refuse clients that schedule seldom grooms a year. Yes. Now, what that means is this usually, this is usually already weeded out during your refusal to rebook upon checkout rule. So if they won't rebook, typically I'm not taking them back. But, yes. but they still, you still will have those clients that ignore that conversation that you had with them the last time they use your services and they'll call you in six months for an appointment. Re and you have to be polite and say, I'm sorry, we are all booked up. That's how you handle that. You refuse the service politely. You're I professional. Have, I have kids that are going to go to college and they're going to cost me a fortune. 
Yeah, I need clients that I can rely on. Yep. Yeah. Um, so you have to refuse service, and that's just what you do. This client does not value your service, and they do not care about the condition of their dog if they're waiting six months to get it groomed. That makes this client a strain on your business, and there is nothing positive about grooming a dog with six months of coat in one grooming session. Is there an exception to this rule? Yes, possibly. Is there an exception to this rule? Would I make an exception to this rule? Possibly consider infrequent grooming appointments for clients with short-haired dog, a short-haired dog, a lab, a pug. Not that they don't need groomed every four to six weeks, because they do, but it will not take you an extra hour and a half to groom that dog. Never accept that if it's a double-coated dog, and certainly not dogs that have continuous continuously growing coats such as doodles, shih tzus, or poodles. Because now what, you have six months worth of growth. What yeah. about charging extra? Well, of course you can charge extra and you should and that's a given, but... If you had like a, a, a limited groom thing that says, you know, you book up every six weeks. I know you give your clients a, a discount, right? If they, if they come within five weeks. They come within five weeks. If they come within five weeks, they get a discount. Just because I'm trying to be, you know, helpful. The dog doesn't have as much coat in five weeks as it would in six or seven weeks. So I give them a 5% discount. If they come in four weeks, they get a 10% discount. And not a lot of people come in four weeks, but I have had many clients over the years that that is what they wanted was a four-week schedule. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, you ha and those are the clients that we're trying to build for our thriving business. So on the same topic about if somebody didn't rebook and they call you in six months and they want an appointment, the exception, maybe if it's a short haired breed, it would be easy to, to fit in. But you had brought up a question like, well, we'll just charge extra and it's all good. But Alex, Big Gus. I go, okay. by, I go by Bob. Okay. We have a dog, we have a very large golden doodle. Big Gus, typically from bath, brush out, fluff to haircut is a three hour groom. Yes. Okay. If I didn't cut his hair for six months, do you think that that's going to be a more lengthy groom for me? But I've only scheduled three, three hours. Well, as your husband, no, I think you should work harder. <laughs> Now, yes, obviously it's going to be. That's why it's what, a problem. But what I was getting at is that if somebody says, oh, I'm going to book in, in a, in a in, they don't book that next appointment, and then they call you up and it's two months or three months, and if it's a six month, it's like, hey, it's a double groom. I mean, is that, I mean, because you're all, Well, if you can you, fit that on your schedule, but I also and, would never ask a dog to endure more than a three hour groom. Yeah. I would never ask a dog to endure more than three hours. Well, yeah, it's it's a, lot. a lot of time. Even for even for big guys. Even he's for a big young, He's a young dog, and he's it's a lot for him. The rest of the night, he's sleeping. Yeah. Um, but there are people that are watching the channel that are not, may not have their schedules completely booked. Having, having a, a, a startup grooming shop, you still need to service these dogs and fill the schedule up so you're making money. So if that's yeah. something where you got to say, okay, that's a double groom, we're going to take two days to do it. But the problem you know. is they don't know the work that's ahead of them until the dog shows up and they may have another well, dog booked in three hours. That messes well, up the whole thing. That's why I'm talking today about having that screening process for new clients only. So you get them in, you assess the groom. If they're a new client, I want you to groom my golden doodle. Oh, have you been here before? No, I haven't. Okay, then I do have to, you know, put you through my new client screening process. It is an appointment we have to make. It'll take 15 minutes. There is a charge for it. Guys, if you want to give them a 5% discount on the first groom because they made that screening process, if you want to give something back, go ahead. But don't give everything away for free. It's still your time. And I'm going to tell you, I haven't told you yet what we're doing in that screening process. So you don't know that yet to Lord determine if this is a dog that we can work with and we would be willing to add it to our schedule because it is it is going to work out, okay? So that's why it's important to have the screening process is because you don't know what you're gonna get. And any pet groomer in this chat right now can give a huge thumbs up and agree with that. 
and say I've had clients that call me with a Shih Tzu and they bring in a a 70 pound Labradoodle, but they told me it was a Shih Tzu mix. I, I, I'm sorry, but we do get that. Yes, and sorry. now we have an hour and a half time slot for that dog and it's clearly not gonna happen. So what do I do? Do I just say, I can't get this dog done in an hour and a half and now I make nothing for an hour and a half because I sent the dog home? What do I do? Screening is important. I, I agree. I'm just saying, I, I, when we talk to the, you know, some people are gonna be able to, if you have, if you're running a business and you have a full schedule, it makes sense to charge the $25 because it's like, I got a full schedule. If I will see your dog, if I can groom your dog, let's get together and meet. It's $25 for me to do that. I think that's And that's a one legit. time only. Now they're a client. But in this, right. But in the same token, you you have people that don't have a full schedule. So I guess you have to take that into consideration when you're not you just still because bring, still just because the dog. They, yeah, yeah, still yeah. The dog, but instead of saying $25, it's like, no, I really need to see if that's an option for me to put that dog on my schedule so I can fill that that slot in my schedule. You know, that's what and, I'm trying to get. And at. I'm going to see during the screening process, you're finding out if the dog's even workable. Yes. There are dogs that are not workable. Yes. So the screening process is very important for new clients. New clients. If they're existing clients, guys, you already know what to expect. All you got to do is get them on that six to eight week committable schedule. Now they are one of your VIP clients. Okay. That's what you want. So we were talking about, you know, if we broke the rule of would we allow a dog to come in if it didn't if it didn't rebook upon checkout well if it's a short haired dog we may consider that it's not a, not a double coat not a dog that has continuously growing coat your your new client screening system may be applied here in order to assess the condition of the dog and determine if this groom should be scheduled as a shave down or broke into two scheduled grooming sessions. Mm -hmm. If it's not a dog that you have seen before and you can't go back and say, okay, this is a client that was here six months ago and she hasn't been back, but I do know the dog and I do know that it is truly a Shih Tzu but I can guarantee it's probably got some matting and it's got an excessive amount of coat. I already know I have to add more time to the groom, but I know what to expect because I know the dog. We're talking about dogs that we're just going to add into our client base. We've never groomed them before. This grooming screening session, the screening session for new clients is very important and I, and I don't think that you should not do it. I think it's very important. Because I, when I, that I, I happens, agree. we find out the dog's completely matted. Yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. I no. Agree that. And I, I think you can also judge the, the client at that point, too, whether they are a person who is, uh, is appreciative or, or um, loves their dog and takes care of their dog. You can see is, the condition see of the, the dog. You can see the care that they give for their dog, yeah. which is important in, in, in you being able to give them a good groom and, and have a client that's going to be you know, showing up on time and showing committed. up, period. Yeah. Just committed. Can I have some of your vodka? It is water. I don't drink vodka. Remember that your client's screening it's session. Vodka. It is not vodka. Just kidding, it's water. <laughs> Remember your client's screening sessions are in place to ensure your ability to be able to work with the dog and assess the grooming needs of the dog, of this particular dog in your new client screening session before committing it to your schedule. It's important. But, you know, I, I hear, I, I wanted Alex to kind of be here. To, <laughs> and it, please forgive me for allowing him to come in here. <laughs> no, I'm I was kidding. bored upstairs. They love you. But he's off work today and he's a pro professional in a different Not area. Really. But I pretend. Having, a, having other other ideas and, and another perspective is good, especially for somebody who doesn't groom dogs because Alex can kind of represent the client who is going, I don't understand why she wants this new client screening session for, to add me on as a client. So I like this perspective. Well, and the other thing I think too, like by charging $25, it does say that your time's valuable. And, and, and it may, is. You, and you may get the customers that might weed out a lot of customers right off the get-go. Yes. That don't, that aren't going to, 
Um, they're going to drain they're, you they're just, mentally, physically, they're, they're and outside, monetarily. Yeah. So they're going to drain you, yeah, and it. I, it they end up getting weeded out at some point. Why not just get it done up front? <laughs> <laughs> That's the way I figure it. Build your thriving business out of the gate. Yeah. And there's plenty of work to be done. And I realize that a younger groomer or a newer groomer, it doesn't mean you have to be young to start grooming. Start grooming whenever you want. I think I was 30. I was mm -hmm. 30 when I started grooming. So a newer groomer, yes, they have gaps in their schedule. But that gives you time to focus on other things and other aspects of building your business. Just because you have gaps in your schedule doesn't mean you should be grooming severely matted dogs. And I know they need groomed. But what happens if you, even as a newer groomer, if you put that new screening for new clients in place, and a client brings you in, they're going to tell you she has a few mats, but you get the dog in and you find out really it is a pelted coat, it's completely matted. A lot of people are in denial over that. Mm -hmm. They're like, really? You ha she was matted, you had to shave it? Really? I heard that and, and I'm holding up one solid piece of right. dog hair that came off the dog and I'm like, you didn't know that this is not only matted, but painful to your dog? I think there's a but lot. But we have to educate of, them. I think, yeah, I think a lot of pet owners are unaware. They're unaware. And when you use words like painful, but you don't say, this is painful to your dog. That hurts them. They do love their dog. That's why you always do have to maintain a professional, trusting demeanor. Because they need you. And they need you to guide them. So when they say, what do you mean she, she was mad? You can show them that because that will make them understand. Yet this solid piece of coat came off your dog. It's, it's matted. And what mats are is when the hair is not brushed out and released from the coat, it t twists itself tight against the dog's skin. And every time the dog walks, the mat pulls their hair. You know, And if it's completely matted, every move they make, is pulling their skin from their hair. So you tactfully explain that to them. And that dog may never be matted again because they will right away say, how do I prevent that? And you say, it's easy. We keep fluffly, fluffly? <laughs> Did you slip vodka into my water? <laughs> you keep fluffy on a six week schedule and I will provide that to you. And Fluffy will never be like this again, I promise you. And you're right. And you can say that with confidence. That's what it takes to keep that from happening. Now, then there's some people say, I don't have money for grooming. These are people that don't value grooming. Because I will tell you, they do have money for going out to eat five times a week, buying Starbucks every day, getting their nails did. You'll see it. They have the money for that. They just don't think they have the money for grooming. They have to want your services. Or their hair. Or their hair. Or their hair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if I walked into a groomer with my, my nails done and my hair did, they and I said to them, I only want to groom my dog three times a year. I just don't have the money. The groomer can just tactfully say, oh, that's a shame. You don't have to argue with them. You can clearly see they have the money. But what you can take from that is they don't value pet grooming and they don't value it for their pet. So you'll never reach them. Never. Mm -hmm. So then we just, off they go. Off you go. I'm sorry. You know, we're professionals. We're not here to do pro bono and fix all the things that have gone wrong with dogs in the last six months because they didn't see a groomer. So the number three reason I would refuse to groom a dog, there's not many reasons I refuse to groom dogs, okay? Large breeds that are full grown and never been professionally groomed. That would be a refusal. And you wouldn't know it unless you did the screening process because they're gonna tell you he's about six months old, even six months old I think is too old for a large breed to finally enter a grooming salon. So a prime example of how dogs and groomers get injured is that. This is a big dog. I work alone. The dog's as big as me. He can throw himself off the grooming table. I can lunge to catch him. 
and break my shoulder on the on the fall on the way down to save him from getting injured they're unpredictable and when they're large they they can out they're not as easy to handle on the grooming table well, unless they're trained to and the other thing is you're self-employed so an injury and i'm out you don't you don't get any workman's comp you don't get anything you're out i'm out i can't groom so. and i'm on the phone telling siri to dial for me because i broke both of my arms <laughs> siri dial my 300 clients you know i have to call them individually and tell them i can't groom dogs anymore but yeah it's you have to protect yourself so why would i do this why would i say large breeds that are full grown and never been professionally groomed why will i refuse them large dogs that require grooming must be introduced to grooming as puppies and kept on a six-week schedule in order to be able to endure long grooming sessions when they become full grown this large breed is going to have a three-hour groom it's going to be so we have to give it to them in small doses and train them as they're growing to learn to get on the table not to have amy pick them up because i can't i will injure myself I have to teach them to get on the table. Mm -hmm. I have to teach them to walk in the tub. If I can't, I can't do that dog. So this is why large breeds that have never been professionally groomed and are full, gr full grown should not be considered clients. These are clients I would refuse unless you do your screening process. If you accept clients with large dogs that are over four months of age before experiencing a grooming session, especially in a professional grooming salon, you need to schedule an appointment for your client's screening session first. Assessing the grooming needs, the coat condition, and see if you can build a rapport with that dog. During that screening process, get the dog on the grooming table, brush the dog, trim the nails, handle the dog for 15 to 20 minutes. This will tell you if it is a good idea to take that dog on as a client. I refuse to take big dogs on as clients unless I start them on a six week schedule no later than four months of age. Guys, we kick them out. Currently, currently I don't accept any new clients at all, because I, I don't. I don't have it, don't have it in my schedule. I only groom the large dogs that I've groomed that I started with as a puppy. So I still do my, my large dogs, I've already trained them. So I'm not going to refuse them, I've already trained them. They, yes, they are more work, but they know what to do and they do it at this point in my dog grooming career grooming large breeds does definitely fatigue me and it's okay to stop adding large breeds to your schedule because your physical abilities have changed don't you mean your advanced age yeah so <laughs> if as you're grooming along guys you've been a groomer for 10 years 15 years however long but but if it becomes physically fatiguing for you to do certain types of grooming or certain breeds it's okay to stop grooming those dogs so you can continue to work and do just you know smaller dogs let the stronger young dog groomers serve that niche and pivot towards small and medium-sized dogs for your grooming business if you have to it's okay to make that decision too mm -hmm. so the exception to this rule if the rule is if you bring me a large dog and he's full grown and he's never been groomed I don't want to groom him is there an exception to this rule my advice to you is to get is for you my advice is for pet groomers that may consider taking on new clients with a large full grown dog brain is definitely to schedule a paid new client screening session in order to determine the co cooperation level of this full grown large breed and honestly I want you to implement your paid new client screening session for every dog you groom including new clients that only want to be on your schedule for nail trims you still could get bit you don't know if you can work with this dog schedule a new client screening session even for nails but now for nail trims wouldn't you just bring the dog in and trim the nails boom 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 some dogs are vicious about having their nails trimmed and some owners believe it or not will not tell you that and they know it and they think i can't do it the dog i got three stitches last time the dog i tried to trim my dog's nails i'm taking them to a professional well that is a good idea <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but that's a good idea. I'll take him to Amy. But you gotta let the professional know this. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? You got to. And they don't always do that. Right. They I'm, think you're a professional, yeah. you can do it. They they literally may just think that. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, dear. So yeah. If you have an existing dog grooming business, start applying this new client screening program today for any and all new clients. Your business will transform into one that is predictable, safe, <laughs> and enjoyable. It's true. Without stitches. Without stitches. Do you have any questions so far? We have a couple more situations of dogs that I wouldn't groom that I want to go over. This has nothing to do with drywall. <laughs> It doesn't. Nothing at all. Nothing to do with sheetrock. No sheetrock here. Okay. 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 Number four reason why I would refuse to groom a dog is if a dog has a flea problem. People used to always think pet groomers are the ones that fix that. Fleas contaminate your entire salon. Assess every dog for fleas as you greet them at the door with the owner. Bend down, say hello to the dog, look for signs of fleas during this greeting process before allowing the dog to ever enter your grooming area. If you do this correctly, it'll look like you're simply greeting the dog for its appointment, but use this time to evaluate the skin for fleas. The client will be unaware that you're checking the dog for fleas. <laughs> they will be, because you don't want to insult them. I'm gonna check your dog for fleas. You don't need to say that. Hi, Fluffy. I'm checking her for fleas. She, the, the owner doesn't need to know that. I don't want to insult anybody. So is there an exception to this rule of accepting dogs with fleas? If you find fleas or flea dirt, refer the client to their vet to correct the problem and schedule a new client screening appointment for a month from the date of treatment to reevaluate the skin for fleas or flea dirt. Do not accept dogs with fleas and do not offer flea bath. These practices are ineffective in today's industry and unsafe. And it's, it's not the job of the dog groomer to rid the dog of fleas. It's the responsibility of the pet owner and the vet. That's all I got to say about that. That's very well said. <clears throat> well, I think that no, we, we get right to the point here, live from the grooming table. We just hit it and get it. I've noticed that Amy always checks my hair when I come in <laughs> from work. She goes, Hi, Hi how Alex. Was your day? How was your day? <laughs> I'm just saying I've never, hello. I, I've never been rejected yet, but so it happens. Get out, you have fleas. Go see your vet. <laughs> number five, I would refuse dogs with a visible skin issue and raw skin with discharge present, for sure. For sure, guys. You're not a vet and you cannot identify a severe skin problem or determine if skin issue is contagious. You're not a vet. So do not groom the dog and refer the owner to their vet for treatment. Schedule that paid screening session for the dog to be reevaluated by you so you can look at the skin and insist that the owner bring proper documentation from the vet stating that the dog has been cleared of any contaminants and that the skin is healed and it is safe to continue grooming without causing problems to the skin. You wanna know these things before you would commit to grooming them and that's where your new screening process is gonna come into play. Is there an exception to this rule? Alex, is there an exception to this rule? Absolutely not. There is no exception to this rule. It says it right in our notes. You know, I never got my contracts on. <laughs> I didn't see a contract. Oh, I saw a contract. The number six reasons I would refuse to groom a dog is dogs that are injured. Some people, pet owners, still think it's okay for that dog to endure a grooming session, but they don't really know what all is involved in a grooming session. Grooming a dog that is injured can result in further injury. As a pet groomer, you do not want to put your business in a position to be accountable for these injuries. Injuries such as broken legs, extreme hot spots, or even collapsed tracheas. You may consider discontinuing your grooming services for dogs with collapsed tracheas because that means that you can have to groom the dog, 
you'll have to groom the dog without properly securing them onto the grooming table because you can't put a loop on them, which could result in the dog falling off the table and suffering an injury or death. Depends. It can happen. I hate to be morbid. It's not worth it. And you may have to say no to grooming this dog for the liability purposes. Mm -hmm. If he's got broken leg, collapsed trachea especially. Broken legs will heal. Take the dog on, you know, when he's cleared. So be careful of making exceptions to this rule of grooming dogs with injuries. Consider allowing the client to remain present in these situations to help keep the dog safe or witness the session. But make sure that your business insurance policy covers them to be in your work area. Some policies do not cover anyone but you. Mine doesn't. If the client is insisting, is assisting in the groom and slips and falls, your insurance may not provide coverage for them. You need to know that. So you would have to call your insurance company and find out what, and, and that's a separate pet grooming insurance I'm talking about. Your homeowners does not cover you as a pet groomer. I have a separate policy for my pet grooming business. And it is in my home, but so you have to have that. Do you have anything to say about that? Uh, most auto shops and other businesses won't accept insurance on anybody that walks past the, the kind of the work area door. Yeah, like to where like enter at your own risk. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, makes sense, kind of right? A, that's kind of a staple on the on those on that stuff. So yeah, you would have to have a separate policy if you have clients coming in there, or one that covers small client visit type stuff yeah assisting yeah. client assisting or maybe it's just a matter of having them sign a waiver you know talk to your insurance company who you have the policy through and say will that suffice if i uh, you know i have a dog that and i personally have a dog that is handicapped um she's paralyzed her back is paralyzed she she drags her back legs she wasn't always paralyzed I used to groom her when she was okay but um, I would allow the groomer to assist in those situations. But now we've gotten to the point where I'm good grooming Not Ginger. Groomer. Not the groomer, the oh, owner. The owner, yeah, I'm sorry. The owner, I would allow that. But I know you're taken by my beauty. I am. And I was checking you for fleas. <laughs> <laughs> so um, my last, I think this is my last reason for not grooming. And then I'm going to share with you what this, what this new client screening session should look like and then i how can comment on how awful it is you can comment all you want oh, and right. we welcome that here <laughs> we welcome that here. i got duct tape right here <laughs> so my last my number seven reason uh reasons i would refuse a dog is a severely matted dog you can consider not doing that groom i have done many of them i know that severely matted dogs are neglected and there is no other way to say it they are neglected. Mm -hmm. There are dangers when grooming a, se a severely matted dog. The mats are so tight to the skin that the clipper could actually nick or cut the skin because of how tight the mat is pulling the skin. Matted dogs are uncomfortable and in pain from the mats that they're wearing. And now you as a groomer are going to be causing them some discomfort by trying to shave it off. So you're adding more pain to the scenario. And often you'll see dogs fighting and crying throughout the entire groom because it hurts if they're severely matted. That's why it, it hurts that you're kind of pushing. Anything you do, anytime you touch that matting, it hurts them. I didn't become a dog groomer to cause pain to dogs. So that's, that's something I don't enjoy. But I am skilled. I do know how to work with severely matted dogs. I just don't like to because it hurts the dogs. And I want to be clear, if you take on a job like this, it will affect you mentally and it will ruin the rest of your day and possibly the rest of your week. It does affect you mentally. The exception to this rule. Obviously, your new client screening system would have flagged this groom. But you can decide to go through with it. So if, if, if during the new client screening process you say, oh, okay, you're a new client and your dog's severely matted. You can still consider taking the dog on if you decide to go through with it and commit the dog to your schedule during this grooming session. You can. 
During the screening process, you should be able to determine if this dog will be cooperative enough to allow you to complete the required grooming needs to correct this neglected state that it's in. So your screening process will allow you to be handling the dog and decide if, if you think it's possible that you could help this dog. And then you schedule it accordingly. Now you know you're dealing with a severely matted dog. You're not just brought one in and surprised by it on your schedule because that's, it changes our whole workflow for the day. And so being able to predict and set up what your schedule looks like is very important. So we're getting ready now to talk about the business model. Are you ready? Are you excited? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know my viewers are. I know they are. So let's talk about what that model looks like, guys. This is your new client screening system. This is how I would do it. This is how I do it. This is how I would suggest you do it. You can make modifications. Get your notepads out and get ready. We're going to talk about what happens during that new client screening process. First thing, all new client screening sessions are paid before the session begins. Some clients may refuse to pay you if you decide not to take them on as new clients. So be clear with them that this appointment is paid in advance. So, you know, people do that. They're willing to pay you, but when you say, I can't do your dog, but, you know, I told you why this is a paid session, they're like, I'm not paying, and they walk out the door. And that's it. You won't get paid. Um, they probably weren't going to pay you anyway because they weren't going to show up after the first room. Well, and that's possible, too. That's possible. So getting that money, getting that Getting paid for that new client session in advance, I think, is very important. Any and all new clients must book a new client screening appointment in order to book an appointment with you for a full groom. The cost and time allotted is determined by you, but it is a must before taking on a new client. I feel 15 minutes and, tw and $25 works well for me as to how much time I allow for this new client screening session and what I charge. But you need to know what works in your business. But you do have, you really do need to do this. Book your new client screening appointments wherever it fits best in your schedule. You could also dedicate one afternoon per week to those screening sessions back to back, okay? So you could plan out one afternoon a week that you block out in your grooming session. This is for new client screening sessions. Now, how many calls do you think you still get for new clients? Are you still ringing well, off the Well, I hook? unlisted my business long ago. Yeah, but I mean, you still, I mean, I still get still calls. Rang, I so. still get calls. I still do, but I unlisted because I didn't want this because I stopped taking clients right when um, Gloria and I decided she started a business with her husband and I right. decided not to bring on another assistant. Right. Cause that was how long ago? About five years ago, six years At ago. least. I hear big deaths up there. Yeah, it was a while. So I stopped taking new clients then and I didn't want to keep advertising as a pet groomer. And right, because you didn't have any, you, had no, I, I, you I, had no holes in your schedule. I didn't and I knew that it wasn't going to open up so I just stopped advertising. So. Book your new client screening appointments where it fits best in your schedule. Like I said, I, I would suggest just picking an afternoon or, or two days a week because, you know, some people only have, some clients only have certain availabilities, you know. So maybe, maybe two, two times a week, the last two hours of those days or the last hour, say the last hour, make open for a new client availability for those new client screening sessions and tell them why you do it say this is this is to ensure that your dog and i can work well together and i can take you on as a client and once you're my client you're in you're my client i'll take care of you you know you let them know what happens during the new client screening session what happens this is what happens you greet the dog in your welcoming area the same as you would a dog that you were admitting in for grooming you ask the client to leave and return in 15 minutes. Leave and return in 15 minutes. You need to focus with this dog. 
Walk the dog to your grooming area, get them up on the grooming table. Take five minutes to acquaint you and the dog with the dog grooming table, positioning the dog in a standing position and with the grooming loop properly secured on the dog. You want to get them on the table as if you're going to be grooming them. See how they behave. See if they can accept this. They may have never had this done before. The dog should remain standing throughout this whole evaluation for many reasons. One reason is he's not in a position of guarding himself. You don't want this dog that's already fearful because he's in a new place to be in a position of guarding himself. You want him to be in a position of confidence for himself. Okay? So have him standing. He is definitely more confident when he's standing. He will need to be standing a lot during the grooming session if he passes his screening. So 15 minutes of standing isn't a problem. You want to make sure you can get that dog standing because it's going to be important for you to be able to work with him. He is learning during the screening session that the grooming table is a safe place where he will work with you. So he's already learning that in the screening session. After five minutes of that, begin brushing the dog. Now you're assessing his cooperation and trust of you and your dog grooming tools, okay? So we've taken it a little step further. We've added tools into it, we're brushing. Continue to give the dog a brush out. If the dog is matted, just go through the motions anyway to determine what you can expect if you commit this dog to an appointment, a full groom. What can you expect if I'm brushing him? Now turn a clipper on without a blade. Just take the blade off, turn the clipper on and pretend you're clipping the dog. Touch the dog with the clipper. Let the clipper run around the face, around the legs, around the body, all that stuff, all that fun stuff. Be patient, be confident and compassionate and pay close attention to the dog's behavior because you want to see if they're trusting you. It's very important. And then next and final thing that I want you to do with this new dog, new client screening session is trim the dog's nails. If you can successfully accomplish these things in 15 minutes of screening in that screening session, you should be confident that you can add this dog as a, a regular scheduled client. And if not, you could schedule a second paid 15 set, minute session to try again to build trust and compliance with the dog. It may take two, but you will get there, but you should get paid for it because you're training the dog and you're also putting yourself at risk. He still can bite you. You know, he still could lunge or do something that hurts you. you. You deserve some type of compensation for this. If the client is not willing to do this, then dismiss them. If they're not willing to go through that $25, 15 minute new client only screening process, then dismiss them as a potential client and put them on your blacklist so that you never waste your time again. They're not gonna commit. They're not going to be a customer that is going to help you thrive and grow your business in a positive way. You're running a, a business, you are running a business and you have to present that demeanor to your clients. Always be kind. Even if you say, I can't groom your dog, be kind about it. Always be concerned for the best interest of the dog and always be professional. This is how you build a thriving, successful dog grooming business, in my opinion. I, the only thing I have to disagree with is that if you can't groom their dog, you should physically remove the owner from the building. What? I'm kidding. <laughs> I should physically remove the owner. No, but does, does it make okay. better sense now, honey? It does. It does. I didn't realize you were doing like I didn't didn't see all this before. So yes, I, I, it makes sense to me. I'm just you but know. Dogs uh, are dogs are um, a liability. I, I, they can be pre unpredictable. I mean, I we need the, to know that we're safe. Yeah, and one of the things we talked about earlier today when we were discussing this was about you know if you don't value your time, nobody else will. No one's going to come and offer you and say, you know, boy, you did, you did my dog for $30. Here's, here's $80, you know, yeah. they'll, they'll give you, a, they'll give you a 10, 20, maybe a 30 Most of my tip, clients always tip. You know. They're very appreciative. But, but you have those clients too that, that, that don't, and you have those people that, that 
everything is a, is a stretch for them. So, so, I mean, so you a, do always you have, have to, to charge for your worth. You have to show that you are worth the money. And by saying that is that you value that time. And no one's paying your bills. You have to pay your bills mm -hmm. yourself. So at the end of the day, giving up 30 minutes or 15 minutes to do this with this dog and, and, and then another 10 or 15 minutes talking to the client and all that stuff. So a 15 minute visit simply turns into a half hour. Mm. So charging $25. Pretty much it does. It's probably very reasonable. And it could a, it avoid a, a, a hole in the schedule at some other point in time. So yeah, And I, it I, could I, avoid you, you having to have a dog on your schedule that you don't know if you can work with him. I, I, I agree with you. I do Holy. have a video linked in the description of this video. You don't see me posting videos often of severely matted dogs. I certainly have groomed my share. These days, it yes. seems to be all just my every five, six weeks. They're never severely Is matted. Is that the dog with the broken leg? No. No, I didn't film that. No. That was before filming was a thing. I wish I could have filmed that. That was a whole... Yeah. A whole... Well, they didn't bear, tell me... They didn't rug. tell... Yeah, and they, there's a picture of it on my Instagram. If you go to my Instagram, um, I'm holding up this picture next to this absolutely sweet, sweet miniature poodle. And he had a broken leg. They didn't even tell me that. She kind of begged me to groom him. She had a Maltese that I groomed regularly. Regularly. And she says, I have a poodle. I said, you never told me you had a poodle. Because yeah. he was in the barn. And he was in a bad way. Oh, he was really bad. And they never came back after Amy gave him the riot act. No, and I did. What well, I, I did call, I did call the um, the Humane Society, and and I don't know what happened because they don't actually report back to you. But I, if the dog had food and water and shelter, I guarantee you nothing happened because that's what they do around here. It's very minimal. It's very minimal. Yeah. Um, the fact that he had a broken leg, and I couldn't even determine that until after I got the matting off. I kept wondering why he wanted to sit. So I thought, well, he's just not used to grooming, but he was being so, he was being so, so well behaved through yeah. the groom, and he was severely matted. Um, I thought, well, maybe he's just not used to it, and if he wants to sit, I'll let him sit as much as possible. And then as I stood him up and started to peel that matting down off of his thigh, mm. he had broken this back, little yeah. baby bone in the bottom of his leg it was broken and, and his leg laid flat his whole bottom of his leg laid flat on the table like that hmm. it was disturbing um but i do i did link a video there's i think only one video on my channel where you'll see me grooming a matted dog because i just don't share that i don't want to showcase that that light is really bright i'm sorry but they have to be able to see us so um, that is linked in the description of this video. It's called Help My Dog. It's, it's me grooming a severely matted dog. And you can see, I mean, and that didn't go well. Mm -hmm. He was fighting me. And like I said earlier, of course he was, because it hurts. Oh, yeah. When they wait to bring a dog in for grooming until they have matting, it's going to be unpleasant to the dog. Mm -hmm. The dog may, now he is a schnauzer. Schnauzers are, are tolerant of everything unless you cause them pain. These mats were causing him pain. He said, I'm not putting up with this. Mm -hmm. He was awful to groom, but I couldn't blame him. You know, now a, a poodle may have acted differently because they're a different dog. They're just so like, I got to do whatever you say. You know, not all poodles. But, you know, if it were a poodle like, like Rusty, the one with the broken leg, he may have just sat there and taken it, but not mm -hmm. Henry. Henry. Oh, Henry said, oh, heck no. Oh, Henry. Oh, Henry said, get off me. Oh, Henry. So that's linked in the description if you guys want to see me grooming a severely matted dog and what that's like. And maybe that will encourage you to implement a system like I'm trying to help you with today. A new client screening system. Are you going to put that in a PDF then? I actually put a lot of it in the description of this video. A lot of it but yes I thought about doing that uh, right now it's just in a notes file yeah but I would like to format it for my a lot audience of would be able, I mean, yeah a lot of people would use that as a reference guide I think it's it's great information. it would be and it would be easier if they could just reference well, it's it it's also easier it's very hard sometimes to ask somebody for money when you feel you're not really 
doing something. something. But it is. So I it's think, a training session. What, what? Well, a dog, a dog yeah. groomer is going to charge you for that, or a dog trainer. Well, like you know, for, for me, I should say for me, I'm like that. Like when you go to do somebody's somebody's job. It's very hard to say, oh, we have to charge extra for that because that wasn't part of the pricing. This wasn't here when we did it. Well, and I understand and that, so Alex. It's like, so I, I but, but that's me personally. So I'm saying if, I, if you have a guide to go by, then you could say, this is why I'm charging this because these five other things are going to are gonna happen. These are going to happen during that these session. Are, right. Yeah. And, and as well as... This is just to initiate, do, do I take this person on as a client? And, you know, once they get on, your other requirements are that they must rebook yes. upon checkout, you know? So you're building a client. Now, don't get me wrong, though you're charging for this, this new client screening process, when you said, you know, you, know, you don't wanna, sometimes you just feel like you just wanna go ahead and give this away. Groomers give a lot away. Oh, I know they do. I mean, but once you're a client, when you when it when we give a lot away, embellishments, oh, um, you know, trying new things and, and putting bandanas and bows and this uh, that costs money. Yeah, no, I, I'm you agreeing know. with you, but like, so so as you start grooming, it's very it's very hard. But as you get to like where you've been doing it for for 75 years now. <laughs> you, you get much faster at it, so it's very, yeah. So like when somebody comes up to me and 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 I'm I'm in year one grooming, and they say how much to groom my dog? I'm like it's a thousand dollars because it's going to take me forever. <laughs> when it, when it's you, it's like it's going to take me an hour. It's going to cost you know fifty eighty bucks or whatever. Yeah. But, so when you go and you do that extra little thing, sometimes you end up not charging for it. That's what I'm referring to when we say about charging the client $25 for coming in to, for you to evaluate the dog but there is a lot of stuff you're getting it's just that it's knowledge that you've already learned and paid for during by by running your business do you know what I'm saying so even though it seems like you may not be giving the client something you really are because your knowledge is what the value is yeah your your knowledge and your time is what the value is and I you know, yeah, again. and there may be dogs that 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 uh, really struggle to endure the grooming process, and say you know the owner says you know I groom my dog myself or I take my dog to this groomer and he just really, really you know fights with her and stuff. Maybe if you are a seasoned groomer and you have a good connection with dogs. Maybe you could offer some of these, you know, a new client session that they could pay you to actually help train the dog to be confident and comfortable in the grooming table. Whereas the other groomer, maybe they're, uh, they've only been doing it a couple years and they just haven't quite understood all that yet. Or they may be just... But you could help may, that. Maybe it may be aggressive. Or that dog, they yeah. just have a connection that doesn't work. But you could help that. You could, by offering your train. We do so much training with dogs as we're grooming them. It's, it's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. and, and we take that for granted. Yeah. And our customers don't even know because they don't realize that we have to train these dogs in order to work with them. So we're do, we are doing a lot of training methods as we're grooming dogs. So if a, if a client grooms their dog themselves, which is fine, and they're having struggles, maybe you can offer something like this to your community to say, I'm not going to be your dog's groomer. You're not looking for a groomer. If you want me to teach your dog some table manners, I can work with them in a couple of sessions, and maybe it will help you at home. Yeah. It's another way, because we know how to do it. Right. And we could teach and, the dog. Yeah. You know, and then have it go back to its owner and have a different experience. Maybe a better one. You know, I know there's so much that we can do. Just don't underestimate your value and your worth, guys, you pet groomers. And I, I you know, I, I know that most of my clients really, really, truly appreciate me. I feel that. I don't feel unappreciated. But over the years, there have been times when I did. There were some clients that, 
ended up getting weeded out. How did that happen? <laughs> ended up getting weeded out, and I replaced them with good clients that care about the grooming of their pet and care about what I offer their pet. So it gets there. You gonna see what's going on in that chat? I'm gonna see if there's any questions up here. And then I have one question that was submitted. Oh. Okay, I don't. Okay, here's a couple questions. We do. Lisa has a question. Lisa says, is it okay to use battery powered beard trimmers on tiny dogs paw pads? I would never suggest that, Lisa, and I'll tell you why. Because the beard trimmers, men's, man's beard trimmers, they typically are a 30 or a 40 blade size, really short. And the blade itself for a human hair beard trimmer is finer, like the teeth are much closer together. It, it, it just could cause irritation. That's why even in a paw pad, it could cause an irritation. So that's why I would say, um, I would recommend not doing that. Now you can go to say Walmart or one of those types of stores and just buy a very inexpensive paw pad trimmer that is going to be gentle and appropriate for just the paw pads. So, but I'm glad you asked that question because, you know, you would think you would, it would be okay. But human clippers are made differently than dog hair clippers that are made to cut dog hair. They're different. Polygraph says, um, what if the client asks for a shave down every time? And, and that's okay. Some clients do ask for a shave down. But don't bring me a matted dog for a shave down. Why? Because it hurts the dog when they're already hurting because of the mats. And like I said, when they walk, it pulls their hair when they scratch, when they jump, when they do everything, the mats tug on their skin. So don't bring me a matted dog for a shave down, you know, because he's going to be angry. And I don't like to work with angry dogs. However, that same dog that's angry because I'm working with him and he's severely matted, if he was not severely matted and I was grooming him and doing a summer clip, he'd be absolutely fine with it because it didn't hurt. So it's okay, Polygraph, to, to go for the short haircuts. Just don't let the dog get so matted. <laughs> you thought I was going to hit him, didn't you? I came close. She does that off camera. <laughs> No, I don't. The abuse happens behind closed doors. Oh, yeah. No, that's a good question. Um, Polygraph said, I understand the liability regarding the dog that has collapsed trachea. Yeah, it's a tough one for us. Um, but if we refuse to groom it, do you expect that they'll find somebody else to be the groomer? You don't have to refuse it. But I really want you to think hard about it because it is a liability. If my dog had a collapsed trachea, if Big Gus had a collapsed trachea, I'll tell you honestly, if I wasn't a dog groomer, I would probably be right here in this community with you guys. I would want to be his groomer because I would be fearful that something could go wrong. And, you know, the, I don't want to put that on a groomer either, you know. I, I don't. I, I know that my dog has this, this very special situation and I wouldn't want to put him or another person in a position for something terrible to happen. So I probably would feel like I have to learn to do this and, and I could. You guys have, you know, so that's probably what I would think about. That's a good question. Thank you. Kathy says, how do you determine what to charge for grooming? Well, all of us depends on where you live. Just like in your business, Alex, you try to stay competitive with competitors. Yes. You just stay competitive. Um, we don't just pick numbers, you know? And, and I'll be honest, there are some groomers that just say, I'm freaking good and I'm charging double what everybody else does. That's okay. They're gonna find clients that really appreciate their work. Because if they charged everybody double, what the other groomers do, 
they the clients that just are expecting your average groom would be like man i'm really getting ripped off here you know because they just didn't really want all that so they so need to where, find a groomer that's well, where adequate for, where are you for a small dog right now i'm underpriced because i haven't raised my prices because i've been focusing more on youtube than my dog grooming business and that's not fair to me but i do I do, I know I'm creating a business with my YouTube and with Go Groomer, and I have stopped accepting new clients a long time ago and now have gotten it down that I really groom three days a week. So I'm just kind of finishing out my clients and then I'm going to stop grooming for a living and continue. <laughs> I'm not going to work anymore, Alex, but I'm going to continue to teach. And you know, I'm, I'm segueing into that, segueing out of grooming for a living and segueing into teaching and educating and going and getting specific, you know, asking for specific dogs so I can make specific videos. That's where this is gonna end up going for me. But right now, you asked a question, I'll be honest, I charge $40 plus tax, that's pretty cheap. For a Shih Tzu, a Schnauzer, a Yorkie, um, for a Cocker Spaniel, it's more around 60 for... It takes about an hour? For a hour and a half. I always schedule so an hour and a like half. $60 a dog. It should be if I was in line with other groomers around here. Fair. But like I said, I don't advertise. I don't take new clients. So I'm not competing. I'm not taking business from other thriving businesses because no. I'm choosing to be cheaper. I don't accept any new clients, so I'm not taking anything. There's a shortage of groomers, so if I just shut my doors on the clients I have now, they would be hurting to find a situation for them. Yeah, I would think as, as, a, as a groomer, you'd have to make at least, bare minimum, $30 an hour. That's just what it costs. Should, and there's, a, there's expenses, and hey, that's- I mean, to have your own business- In your and, house, and, uh, mine's in my house. If I had a storefront, I've got three thousand in rent. A plumber, a plumber's eighty dollars an hour. I know, and this is a skill just like that. Yeah. Your plumber can't do what you do, and you can't do what your plumber. Well, maybe you can plumb, but you see what yeah, I'm I, saying. I got a comment. Your that. skill is I can't do drywall. I watch him do drywall, you know, and, and blend it all together and sand it out and feather it. It looks like it just looks like a wall. It looks perfect, like a wall. It looks like a wall. I couldn't do that. That's a skill. Just like if I asked you to groom Big Gus, it would, it would, you would be, I, I can't do this. You know, we have a skill. It's the same thing, guys. It's the same as any other profession. You know, and skilled tr trades are something to be proud of because there's not a lot of people getting into those trades, including dog grooming. Mm -hmm. So what we can do as seasoned groomers is teach people how to do it whether it's like i'm doing on youtube and giving it away for free guys i want to tell you what you can do as a seasoned groomer is you can offer private lessons to people in your community there are people who do want to learn to groom their dogs and there are also people in your community that want to learn to be professional groomers so say you bring me a dog we'll schedule this it's 250 dollars because i'm teaching you one-on-one -on -one private lesson you bring the dog of your choice i will schedule it on my schedule so instead of grooming five dogs that day you groom three the second half of your day is a training day and if you charge 250 dollars for it it's that's that's excellent i mean you it's good money they're getting great knowledge on a dog that they specifically want to learn to groom you know, they may struggle with the schnauzer trim. They say, well, I'm gonna bring you a schnauzer and we're gonna do that one-on-one -on -one private training session together and I'm gonna learn from you the best how to groom like that. You can offer us, you know, people that are seasoned groomers should consider that because newer groomers don't have many options for learning. You don't have to be, you don't have to feel like you have to offer a certification but your training with the knowledge that you have acquired over these years is so valuable what you have to offer somebody who wants to learn to groom 
so and, valuable. And don't forget, I'm still training Amy too. <laughs> it's taking a long time. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning to sheetrock. No, Where's no, my meant, tool belt? I meant grooming. Come on. <laughs> God. God. So, I really hope that this has inspired you guys to implement things such as your new client screening sessions into your existing business. And if you have not practiced that thus far and you already have a client base but you still accept new clients, implement it now for the new clients. And that way you would assure yourself that you are not diving off a cliff with some of these dogs that you're adding to your schedule because you don't know what you're Ashley getting. says, well, in, in my area, that for mobile, that'd be $115 now. Oh, yeah, that sounds uh, right. Mobile I mean, around just, here is uh, about 90, 100. Yeah, everything's, yeah. Gone, everything's gone crazy. I mean, just you know, well, food and, and that kind of stuff, too. It's that, But that's been the price for a while for it? mobile, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, $50 for a, small, for a small dog groom around here is pretty typical, $50. Yeah. Um, but I should be charging probably about 60. Yeah, I think so, at least. <laughs> but that's, uh, so if any of my I, I clients mean, I, I are... Just, see, what I was saying earlier about we do give back, I think we do. We, yeah. We're reluctant to raise our prices. I think I have over the years, but... I think but, it's very important as, as a person that's self-employed that you make sure you, you pay yourself. Because if you don't pay yourself, nobody else will. It's you that has to pay for your, your living, your retirement, and all that all that jazz yeah so, so do a good job and make sure you pay yourself a fair rate you don't have to you don't have to screw anybody out of money but don't screw yourself out of money either absolutely you know? and typically dog groomers are pretty honest caring compassionate yeah. people we don't want to screw anybody and we do often underestimate what what our worth is but I'll be honest with you guys um, he brought up a good point about even retirement money you want to retire right well, part of your retirement is to offer training. You need to start, stop grooming so many dogs and start offering to train people. You know, at, offer single sessions, $300, $250 a piece. I wouldn't do it for less than 300 honestly. For one dog. But yet, she grooms a dog for 40 But I wouldn't train <laughs> private <laughs> lesson. You get all the crazy. I'm decent. But it, last year was the first year in my entire professional grooming career that I put money in away for my retirement. Yeah. Sean is watching this going, Amy, you know better. Sean is a fantastic businesswoman. Oh, yeah. I swear to God, she, Sean, she's wonderful. Sean's another one who, who reads an From SVCC toy schnauzers. I can't say that fast. That's like she shear sheep down at the seashore or collect seashells down at the seashore. Yeah, it's not going to happen. She collects tiny, cute, cuddly schnauzers. <laughs> so, <laughs> she does. Anyway, but there is a dog that she goes above and beyond. To, what she to charges. Be a good dog. Ellie is just not afraid of anything. She's wonderful. She's, she's very friendly. She's not jumping around, getting crazy on anything. She's just. She's attentive. She, yeah. She's trainable. A, she's trainable. She's a wonderful dog. I mean, that's just. Good grooming, good, good grooming, good breeding. Yeah. But again, that has to come at a price, you know, for the work that she does to have all the audio and have other people coming in and spending time with the dogs, so they're being handled and not just left with mom and being played with and being so they get Lots used to all that. Lots of socialization, That's DNA great. testing to make sure yeah. that sh that she is breeding healthy dogs. Right. So it's That's good. why she does it. And it's so it's good to charge for what you what you do to charge a fair price. That's a knuckle bump for you, Sean. <laughs> she yeah. is wonderful. And um, Sean and I are going to be doing a collaboration live stream. Sean is the breeder from LA Grace. With vodka. No vodka. Um, Sean and I are gonna do a collaboration video that is going to collaborate with breeder and groomer um, as far as all kinds of different topics or, you know, with these two things coming together. Um, these two perspectives. So um, look forward for that. Sean and I have it scheduled to actually record that the end of January. Um, and then, thanks, knuckle bump back. And then uh, 
it'll be releasing to my audience and then to Sean's audience as well. So we're, we're just all trying to breed, breed awareness. So, um, and, and good habits and, and, and what's best for each other, you know, and, and lift each other up and, oh, yeah. and know your worth. Um, grooming is a skill. We, we need to have that on a t-shirt, just skilled groomer. Boom! That's what I am. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's. A, I'm gonna get her a cape. <laughs> yeah, I'll groom in a cape. I'm a dog groomer. I'm skilled. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I hope this has been great for you guys, Alex. I'm glad that you chimed in. I know that they enjoy your perspective, and I've enjoyed it. Um, it's it's nice to have another another uh, mindset that maybe is not exactly like mine as a groomer so it brings a nice perspective <laughs> and by the way we have people that we won't work for as well in your business that they are nickel and dimers um so they're unfair well they just they just price everything like we're in a business just like just like you are where the market kind of sets the price so if this is what everybody's charging you can charge about the same or a little bit more or a little bit less if you want the job and you have some people that are out there that want you to do it for next to nothing and it's like you still have to make money so we choose not to operate with those businesses we let the other guys who want to work for nothing work for them there are people so, that will that will just so pick it, up whatever it, but you know so you can you have that option to say this is what i need to get paid and you know so it's 25 dollars for me to evaluate your dog i'm going to spend 15 minutes with your dog another 50 minutes talking to you about it yeah, and then I can, and then we can see. And we then we can we can build a relationship and start I'm, from there. I'm sorry, I went back on another rant. You know what? I got two super chats, so I'm glad. Thank you, Jordan. Jordan says thank you for sharing your knowledge, Amy. And I saw there was another super chat up here somewhere. Did it? See, I have, let me end yeah, that. I want to. I want to call you. Is that you are so gonna get the salute? You you I'm are so it. getting it. There was another one. It's way up there, and see, it only refreshes so far for me. Did you happen to see? I thought it was Janelle. Was it Janelle? I saw it come through, and I was yep, yep, yep. And I'll tell you what the uh, topic is for next week, guys. Um, oh. I'm sorry for in two weeks. It's all gone. That's yeah, see, it. I saw it. it. It refreshes only so far. It does not stink. So, my channel members, I'm getting together with you this this Saturday. I can't wait. We're getting together um, January 7th at 2 p.m. and it's about puppy grooming. Okay, that's our topic and that's what we're going to be learning about. So if you're not a channel member, you can hit the join button, which is beside the subscribe button, and become a channel member for $4.99 a month and you will get Amy Lee in Zoom sessions with her members only once a month and you also have uh, an entire playlist of videos that are only available to channel members. Uh, so that is something that you get. But if you want to join, it's wonderful. We have quite a few channel members. We are we call our class Sheer Joy with Amy Lee and the Hounds, and it's fantastic. Our next live from the grooming table is scheduled for Monday, January 16th at 5.30 p.m. And the topic is avoid fearing the dogs you groom. Boom! I've heard so many people say, Pol I'm afraid to do this, Pol I'm afraid. Polygraph brought up a good thing. She says, I for one would not do the $25 consult if I were the client. To me, that screams high class groomer that's going to be too expensive. So oh. I mean, there's, there's that side of it I too. I get it, but I'll tell you, Polygraph, I am a high class groomer. <laughs> I'm being honest. I deserve it. Sounds a bit common. You know, and well, I, you, you know, by saying you I would, by saying I don't want a high class. What do you want a groomer that has bugs and and parasites in her shop? Well, no, that's not. I mean, what is a high class groomer? I, I I am very, I am very dedicated to what I do, and for the dogs I serve, I am overly cautious. You know, if you don't want that. That's just her. That's just for her. She's just saying that's her opinion, it, and she's probably yeah. she's probably feeling that in her area. You know, maybe a sixty dollar groom or a forty dollar groom is, is, is what the average is. So I yeah, but I our, mean, in our area, that's okay. In our area, I don't know if you would find a, a, 
I mean, you could probably go 10 miles down the road and the groomer could charge that $25. But I think up where we are, I think you might have a tough time getting people to take that $25. No, I you wouldn't. think so? Nope. Okay. No, especially if I've been in business for a couple years and I have a reputation. My business grew through word of mouth more than anything. Sure. Quickly. Quickly. And, you know, people wanted me to groom their dogs. Mm -hmm. So... If you want me to groom your dogs, I want to make sure that I'm not putting your dog on my schedule and I can't complete the groom and then you don't want to pay me for now a full grooming session. I feel that it is very important to ask for that and if, and if clients don't want to pay it, I have a feeling that they're clients that do not value pet grooming. They don't value the fact that their pet does need groomed more than three times a year. And if that's just not the kind of groomer I am, I don't want to do those types of grooms Sean, because it's not nice. Sean brought up another little thing here. It says, how about selling 10 or 12 groom sessions as a package for 5% or 10% discount that make your base price and everything beyond there is 20% more? Yeah, that's I mean, a great idea. So I told you she's a fantastic yeah, well, businesswoman. She's, she's, she's very modeling. organized with how she can get stuff done. That's a great idea. Create packages. Offer a 10% discount on a package of 10 grooming sessions or something, you know, because then that ensures... And you do them for the year. We, yeah, it would have to be in you a time frame. If you did that for a lifetime, people would... They would separate 10 grooms over 30 years. <laughs> no, you don't want that. There's a time frame. But, you know, just be sensible about it, about how you want to package this up. But... There, you know, I created the package that I did, whereas if you bring your dog in five weeks or less, because not many people do, but there were those people who wanted those more frequent appointments, I felt they needed a discount. So I offered them 5% off of every groom at five weeks. If they, if they booked in four weeks, I gave them 10%. Yeah. The dog doesn't have as much coat. He's, you know, in great shape. Yeah. You know, so I gave him a discount. But you can put together packages, but the whole point of this whole me sharing my new client screening system Pam is Neely. to find Pam Neely. Oh, yes. Hi, Pam Neely. She has the beautiful poodle that comes in here, Reese. Big brown, says, phantom. As a non groomer, but an owner of a very loved pet. I would pay this so I can meet the groomer and see how our baby responds to the groomer. It's a good and idea. How the groomer handles and interacts with the dog. That's, That's a fantastic. Great point. See, Pam's smart. You're so smart, Pam. She's right. And She's Pam, right. Now that Amy let it out of the bag, how much she charges for little dogs, you can cut your price in half. <laughs> no, I. No, they. The big dogs are three hours. But uh, I'm still low on my big dogs. I'm I just know I am, kidding. but I'm okay. Um, but th that's exactly Pam. Um, I would, you know, if I had to take Big Gus to a groomer, that that'd be tough. I mean, I, I really have to trust the person. But what if I never met them and now I got to drop him off for three hours? I'm going to be worried sick. This new client screening session can be that moment where the client can see you interact with the dog when you greet the dog the client can meet you and read you and decide if if they feel that they trust you to groom their dog you know that's important that's a good point all right are we out we we're off we're going to subscribe a showdown for we're you off. guys we're out we're gone we're off we're out I am so glad that you joined me tonight. Well, Thank time. you, Alex, for joining us. All of you, I wish you a happy new year. It's going to be a great year. We're going to learn all kinds of awesome things together, make great videos, and groom awesome dogs. So keep doing what you're doing. You're wonderful. I appreciate you. I didn't give that salute for our Super Chats, and it's coming right now. Thank you for the super chats and all your support. And for those that didn't super chat, I still love you. You know I do. You are getting saluted, and I appreciate it. It's just a wonderful community that we've created here. Thank you. And I sincerely am glad that you're here and that we are able to be together and you share so these wonderful... You look so great on camera. I look so... It's like... You're too far back. Get closer. You look better. <laughs> well, don't smirk. Smile. <laughs> All right, just for that, here comes a subscriber showdown. Alex P. 
Peace out. Oh.